A while ago, I noticed that shotgun traps will trigger if you stand above them. I realized that this can be used to shoot out twig, which stabilizes a collapsible floor, allowing to make very sneaky automatic traps. Playing with the concept, I came up with a great trap-based design. But before I could get to record it, Mal published his genius Bundy trap base, which used this concept in a most compact form of a 2x1 that at the same time looks like a realistic starter base. Later, Prince Witz used the same technique in a more advanced design, which also allowed him to close the door from inside the base to secure the loot. Thus, I put the design on hold and instead used and refined it extensively on a vanilla high pop server together with Old Fool and various other friends. It brought us so much gear and fun, that even though the core concept is not novel anymore, I had to share it with you. We named it the Mauler, because of how badly it mauls its victims. The base comes in the basic shape of a honeycomb 2x2. It costs about 12k stone to build and 1.7k stone to upkeep it. Here is how it works. Upon entering, you find this open double door. The moment someone steps past this double door, shotgun traps will shoot out the twig half wall which holds up two floor tiles. A second shotgun trap then covers the triangle in front of the door, so even if your victims react fast, the traps will still get them. The key advantage of this design is how the floor collapses. With the square and the triangle floor gone, friends of the victim can neither see the shotgun traps nor get into the base without getting mauled as well. This means they can neither shoot out the traps nor loot their bodies. With enough shotgun traps, you can even guard the entrance to kill people who still are in the entrance area. As the base owner, you can be sitting on these shotgun traps, which allows you to watch and record your trappings. Another advantage is that from this position, you can close the double door without being exposed, so that afterwards you can loot your victims in peace. To reset the base, simply place a twig half wall here, then add a square and a triangle floor tile and upgrade them to stone. The base further comes with an additional 2x1, which works as the starter unit of the base, allows you to temporarily store loot of your victims and allows you to craft items on site if necessary. For the build, choose a site where you expect a lot of foot traffic. Then, try to find a spot where you can sink two squares and one triangle as low to the ground as possible. Build two raised square foundations next to the lower square foundations, and raised triangle foundations around the rest of the lower foundations. If that works, you found the spot for your trap base. The raised square foundations will serve as starter unit. Upgrade the foundation that is closer to the triangle and put walls around it, a double door facing the other raised square foundation, and place a TC like this in this corner. At this point, we used to destroy the rest of the twig to not let people know what we were doing. For the sake of the video, I leave it in place so that it's easier to understand what's going on. Upgrade the second raised square, Add walls and a single door frame facing the lowered square. This allows the double door to work as airlock. You now have a standard 2x1 base without triangle airlock to work with. Design the inside as you like. For the TC room, you can, for example, use the box placement strategy that I presented in my quick tips video on hyper efficient loot rooms. For the other room, I recommend to have furnaces, 
a workbench and sleeping bags. You can operate out of the starter unit while you build the rest of the base. For the next step, save up materials to be able to complete it as quickly as possible. If you destroyed the foundations earlier, rebuild the foundation plan now. Then upgrade all foundations, beginning with the raised ones to stone. On this side, add a doorway and a door. Next to it, we like to have a shop front to make the base look lighter and friendlier. Add walls around the outer sides of the rest of the triangle foundations. Then close everything off with a ceiling. Add another wall here and next to it a double door that opens inwards. The base is now secured and you can safely work on the interior. You will need 3 to 7 shotgun traps, depending on how safe and effective you want to be. To get the placement right, build the twig half wall and the two collapsing floor tiles. Next, place a sleeping bag into this corner. Whoever operates the trap the most should get this bag as you can spawn here and close the outer door the fastest. Now you are set up to place the shotgun traps. I'll demonstrate the placement in order of importance. Right next to the sleeping bag, place a shotgun trap facing straight forward. This is the trap that will destroy the twig half wall and let the floor collapse. Second, place a trap as close to the twig half wall as possible, pointing at the tip of the lower triangle. Verify that the trap cannot be seen when you walk in through the double door. This is the trap that will kill anyone who enters the triangle, making it impossible for the victim to outrun the traps once they are triggered. Third, place a trap next to the first one, covering the diagonal. The base now operates safely in the majority of the situations. In some cases, people were running in so fast that the lower traps were not getting them reliably. Thus, we placed another trap above those two traps. In rare occasions, a player made it past all the traps into the dead zone behind them. And since we tended to leave all doors open, we covered the entrance into the 2x1 with another trap. Finally, consider placing a trap guarding the entrance. You need to stand on a box to get the angle right. In several occasions we had groups where the survivors were standing in the doorways trying to loot their friends. This trap should deter them until you're able to close the outer door. The base is now almost ready to go into action. The last thing to do is to ensure that these triangles do not stay open so that players could jump onto them and evade the traps. On the one behind the traps, I love to put a locker. This allows to quickly change into bait gear sets if you hear someone running by. This triangle we sometimes use for the workbench, at other times we used it for furnaces. Just make sure that players cannot run onto it. If you don't want to put anything there, block it off with a wall. This triangle we sometimes use to hold drop-off boxes with bait loot. Place a half-height triangle like this, so you can add two boxes. If you have the prison cell gate or a garage door, consider to leave the ceiling out and build a simple roof exit.
This way, you can even bait people in through the roof. Though be careful if they are not alone, as their friends can shoot you from the roof entrance. If the traps are placed well, they are not visible when entering through the roof either, until it is too late. We used to put down boxes here to hold emergency materials. At the same time, these boxes visually conceal the outer shotgun traps even better. While the base is operational at this point, one sensible extension is to honeycomb the rest of the base, so it looks like a 2x2 with honeycomb. Primarily because it makes the base look more realistic, but it may also make the difference if a salty victim launches a half-hearted raid attempt. When we used the base in practice, we sometimes felt that we wanted to add more items, such as a locker, and chose to use one of the honeycomb triangles for this. Thus, we several times ended up backward picking a wall to extend the base. While this of course was a bit tedious, it sometimes turned out to be really great bait. In general, adapt the design. Close one of the walls, change the airlock, add a roof or a second floor. As with all trap bases, they work best if people don't recognize them. It's a 2x2, so the possibilities should be endless. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. May the mauler bring you lots of fun and loot. Until then, Evil Wurst, out.